Experimental filmmaker Maya Darren is known for her inventive editing and her imaginative manipulations of time and space. However, her film style represents more than just playing with technique. Darren was a thoughtful filmmaker who wrote numerous essays on her film practice and about cinema as an art form. In this video, I'll look at three key principles that undergird Darren's cinematic philosophy. Amateurism, an interest in the body, and the manipulation of reality. Darren wrote multiple essays for a magazine called Movie Makers, the official magazine of the Amateur Cinema League. The league had been founded in the 1920s during a time when American culture valued amateurism as a practice of invention, industriousness, and a love of craft. Amateur Cinema League members viewed themselves as the ultimate cinephiles, free to discover the artistic possibilities of cinema because they were not bound to profit. For Darren, amateurism meant freedom the freedom to pursue any theme or stylistic experiment without regard to commercialism because self-funded projects are not beholden to anyone but the artist. In her essay, Planning by Eye, she writes, I am firmly convinced that a prerequisite of really original and creative work is that a production be scaled modestly enough to afford failure. Like so many filmmakers in the first half of the 20th century, Darren was preoccupied with medium specificity meaning that she was interested in how cinema as an art form was different from other art forms. She and many of her contemporaries felt that too many filmmakers, particularly commercial filmmakers, relied too heavily on theater or literature, making static films with too much talking instead of taking advantage of cinema's ability to construct and manipulate movement and time. Movement is at the core of the second key principle of Darren's cinema, the body. We see this theme on screen through her frequent portrayal of dance and her visual treatment of the moving figure. But Darren's interest in the body extends to the filmmaker as well. In such essays as Adventures in Creative Filmmaking, Darren encouraged amateur filmmakers to free themselves of the encumbrances of equipment, including the tripod. Instead, she encourages the filmmaker to use their own body as equipment because for the self-funded filmmaker, the body is the most flexible and mobile instrument available. Too often, she argues, the amateur filmmaker puts the shot composition in the service of the tripod rather than putting the tripod at the service of the composition. She says, we tend then to shoot from the position in which the tripod can most comfortably assist us. The amateur filmmaker working with limited means has less time to set up shots and maybe shooting in small spaces with limited control over the location. The adaptability of handheld becomes an advantage as the body can move easily and quickly, adjusting to the shooting conditions at hand. Through the body of a skilled camera person, the camera can explore space dynamically. In addition to the body and movement, Darren was deeply invested in cinema's ability to construct new realities. She wasn't interested in abstraction, but instead viewed our everyday world as the foundation that the creative film artist should manipulate. In her essay, Cinematography, the Creative Use of Reality, she discusses the importance of the controlled accident for constructing believable cinematic worlds. Controlled accidents are aspects of our everyday life outside the filmmaker's control that make the action on screen feel more real. She uses the example of filming on the beach. The scenario you film is invented, but, she says, it borrows reality from the reality of the scene. From the natural blowing of the hair, the irregularity of the waves, the very texture of the stones and sand. In short, from all the uncontrolled, spontaneous elements which are the property of actuality itself. As anyone who's watched Maya Darren's films knows, she's not advocating for realism. Rather, she's interested in how we can take these pieces of our everyday reality and manipulate them to create a reality that could only exist on screen. The most iconic example from her work is the way her characters step through different spaces with only a match cut to link them. They move from beach to dining hall and through brush all in the same sequence. It's important to point out that Darren's techniques are always at the service of the film's overall concept or theme, something she emphasizes in her essays about filmmaking. For example, in Adventures in Creative Filmmaking she writes, the techniques which I have described would have been of no interest at all if they were not conceived for the purpose of conveying meaning. She considered the mind the most powerful tool at a filmmaker's disposal, and in her writings encouraged other amateur and independent filmmakers to plan their films thoughtfully and creatively, 
and to always keep in mind the things that make cinema a unique form of art. I'm Laura Ivins. Thank you for watching. <laughs>